did you tell her about the baby? I told her he was dead. I didn't tell her you were a murderer. Say that again. Murderer. I see you rot in hell. I'll see that. Both of you, please. Please, don't do this. That man just killed his child. Oh, Todd, for one second, would you put yourself in his shoes? What if Star had been the one to die? You just don't get it, do you? You don't see it? Or else you do see it, you just don't want to. What are you talking about? I'm talking about evil. Patrick didn't run his car off the road into the tree by accident. That is the vilest thing you have ever said. Yeah, it's vile, but it's true. That baby meant the world to Patrick. Not as much as his precious Margaret did. It was coming down to crunch time, wasn't it? Baby Thornhart wasn't just going to be a, a lump in Blair's belly much longer. And, and you were here when Marty issued her, her ultimatum. I didn't hear any ultimatum. Yeah, you did. What did she say, that damn baby? She said you couldn't deal with it? She said it was him or it was her? And then Patrick walked out of here saying that, that, that he was going to take care of it. Todd, you know what he meant! He was going to take care of Blair because she was upset that he went by the... He went to calm her. No, man, he saw his, his last chance walking out of here. And, and, and I don't know when he got the, the, the bright inspiration. Maybe he, maybe he was on the wet road when it happened. Maybe he, he planned it. Because, you know, he had a seatbelt. She didn't. He had an airbag. She didn't. So what does he do? He picks the perfect spot and wham. Mm. with fear, but that is no excuse for what you're saying about Patrick. Thank you for your compassion. Todd, I've been here. I've spent hours, days, weeks walking these halls waiting. I have faced death, and so have you. Now, Blair and Patrick are in there right now, mourning their baby. Blair is. Don't do this. Don't do this. Be the, the father and the husband and the person. I know you can be. Patrick, how is Blair? She's empty. Is she in a lot of pain? Her heart's broken. Yeah, I guess it is. I'll, I'll come back tomorrow and check on her, Vicky, okay? Stay the hell away from her. You turn your back on me again, Patrick. It's the last time I'm going to warn you. Are you busy? I'm working on a couple of things. Oh, well, then I'll keep this short. Um, it turns out that my client, Alex Olinoff, is a suitable bone marrow donor for Star Manning. <laughs> Small world, huh? Yeah, she leads a charmed life. Yeah. It couldn't have come at a better time, I agree. So the transplant's going to be in a couple days, and naturally, I want all the publicity we can get. Marrow miracle for murderers. <laughs> So will you do a story? Uh, I mean, she is saving a child's life. Mel Hayes is already doing that story, and I can't infringe. I'm sorry. You can ask him. Oh. Okay. That all you wanted? No. Uh, no, not really. If it's not too much trouble. I'd like to know what's going on between us, if anything. Uh. 
craved by the bell. Yeah. I think I just got my answer. Hey, uh, Cassie and I are colleagues. I mean, it's natural that she would come over to discuss a problem with me if she had one. Don't worry. I don't gossip. So, you finally snagged him, huh? Just go away. Is that what you want? I'll see you tomorrow. Probably not. Hey, Tweety, I'm home. You were dead. Thought I was gonna have to stuff you and nail you to your perch. You're a little rat, you know that? Come here. Feed the bird. What do you think I came home to do, you adult? You're right here, too. Now, I want you to eat this, okay? Because this is breakfast. It's the most important meal of the day. Now, I'm sorry I don't have any clam sauce. Now, don't mope on me, okay? You, you, you. I think you're the only one that's got troubles. What about me, huh? You got something to get my feathers all ruffled about? Yeah, thanks for your compassion. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna leave you here, all right? Try not to brain yourself on the windows. I gotta get back to the hospital. Oh, now, come on. They don't allow your kind in the ICU, otherwise you could come. Well, I know how you feel, but you just can't go. I'll be back as soon as I can. Tell you what, we'll spend a, a little quality time together, okay? Try and get your runty little mind around this. I got a daughter with fewer blood cells than you have toes, and I got a wife, ex-wife, whatever, more broken bones than you have feathers. Now, you aren't bad company, you know that? Good bird. And you're modest, too. Tell you what. You, uh, go ahead and tell me all your problems. I'll just lie up here. Or we can have a little quiet time. Just don't, don't recite any more poetry, okay? Or never more. You bet your beak, never more. You and I both know that Professor McPoet crashed that car on purpose. See, he was going for a hat trick, trying to kill three people at the same time. Blair, his kid, and, well, star's down, but she's not out. And me, I'm too mean to die. If you be looking at this, you get your own food. See, Margaret... No. Margaret had said that it was her or the kid. And what better way for Patrick to solve the problem than to run the car off the road and whack into a tree, kill the kid? Ah! Yeah, right, right. I, I don't know what to do. Revenge! You are my kind of bird. See, Marty said something about Patrick's past. Something back in Ireland. The morgue. Send him to the morgue. Oh, well, that's a good idea, but I'm talking about a different kind of morgue. See? <laughs> morgue. It's where the sun keeps all of its old stories. <clears throat> Look, it's me, that I'm the morgue. Have them send me everything they got on how... Excuse me. <clears throat> Patrick Thornhart. Yeah. Yeah, I'm at home. <clears throat> Everybody's got a secret. <clears throat> No, really, trust me on this one. Everybody's got a secret. I just have to find out what Thornhearts is. Oh. Hi, how cute. I wanted you to know that I'm proceeding apace with preparations for donating my bone marrow to Star. Proceeding apace. Yes. How is she, Star, I mean? She's not doing good, but she'll do better. You know what, I don't want to talk with you about this. Maybe tomorrow, maybe next week, some other time. Well, I'll be happy to get out of your hair as soon as you give me my living expenses of $40,000. Ah.
your what? My living expenses, $40,000. I don't know what you're talking about. You had an awful cold. We had a telephone conversation. You were so hoarse, you were practically croaking. More like squawking. What did you tell her? Look, Alex, more than likely you had a conversation with my parrot. Because I would never loan you one thin dollar. Oh, well, excuse me, but it was no loan. And I'm sorry, if I had a phone conversation with a bird, I would know that I had a phone conversation with a bird. Because I have not had a phone conversation with a bird. I know that I haven't had a phone conversation with a bird. Besides, a bird has not been born. He could bargain me down from 50 to 40 grand. Besides, he doesn't seem like he can really talk anyway. Now, come on now, tell her. Tell her, you little sack of millet. I really don't understand your attitude. Not only am I granting your newspaper exclusive rights to my story, but I'm saving your daughter's life at no small personal right, right, inconvenience. Right. I know that you've been under awful stress, and I certainly understand uh. how... Extreme pressure can bring on delusions. I am sure that this story is going to have a happy ending for all of us. You got that right. Yeah, thanks. Got it. That's not it. Intended target of the Irish extremist group, believed responsible for the murder of our publisher. Send him to the bar. You're getting on my nerves. Named adjunct professor at Landview University. That's not it. Aided police commissioner Buchanan in disarming an explosive device at the Palace Hotel. You see, I know all this, right? She said something about iron. Oh. Marty, she said... Patrick was having some kind of troubles back home. Hearts. Cooperation was said to be invaluable in affecting the capture of Keneally. Men of 21. Oh. The bad guys. Oh. oh right, right. Who? Right. No, no, just shut up for a second. Now listen to me. See, this guy here, right here, he, he was the bad guy, right? The architect, the chief cook and bottle washer for the men of 21. This guy has like a million and one connections in Ireland. Keneally is the man to see. Dublin Times, right? Oh, excuse me, Irish Times. I'm not supposed to know. You're both in Dublin, right? Anyway, listen, my name is Todd Manning. I'm a publisher of a paper here called The Sun. It's in the United States, in Landview, Pennsylvania. Can you put me through to the morgue, please? Well, I'm looking for a man here who was arrested and extradited, one of the men of 21. Well, his name's Thomas Keneally. Could you tell me what prison he's in? Well, maybe you could go find out. Yeah, you can fax it to me. I'm at 215-555-0191. What's that? Email? You use that junk? All right, well, you can send it to me at, at boss.sun.org. Yeah, listen, as much as you can, all right? Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Well, uh, thanks for seeing me. Well, when I heard Mel Hayes had some questions for me, I was curious. You sit there. Oh, all right, I'll sit there. <clears throat> I was uh, pleased to hear Blair and your daughter are doing better, and uh, congratulations on finding a bone marrow no, at the start. I don't want to talk about this. This isn't a social call. <sighs> you looking for a new job already? No, I've still got my job. I'm looking for a story. Why don't you look somewhere else? Tell me about the accident. I'll give you the number for the Landview Police Department. <laughs> no, anyone can print up a police report. I'm looking for more than that. I'm looking for your story. Oh, my story? Your paper? That's funny. Well, <clears throat> I figure it's kind of payback. You had me howling in your headlines. That was a good picture, though. I figure you owe me. On one condition. You get Vicky's okay to print the truth about what happened that night. Which is? That accident was no accident. Patrick meant to drive that car off the road. Why do you think he'd want to do something like that? Patrick's fiance, Marty Saybrook, was whining in front of a bunch of witnesses 
about how upset she was that Blair was pregnant with Patrick's baby. And he walked out of there, said he was going to take care of it. Take care of it? Direct quote. So, Patrick offers Blair a ride home, only he doesn't drive her home. He drives her right into a tree, no seat belt. No airbag, he walks away healthy. Blair's got more broken bones than she has unbroken bones. And the, the kid conveniently got taken care of. End of story. Well, see, that sounds more like coincidence than convenience. Freud said there are no accidents. Hmm. Now, the police report says that uh, he swerved to avoid a head-on collision with an oncoming car. What car? Show me the car. You show me the car. Police haven't found a car. No, but they found skid marks. And is there any proof that those skid marks are directly linked to the so-called accident? No. Do I have to say anything else? Uh, do you mind if I smoke? <clears throat> no, go right ahead. Just don't exhale. Are you uh, generally paranoid? Or is there something in your history with Thornhart that brings it out on you? So you want it all? I'm rarely satisfied with anything less. How did you and Thornhart meet? My mistake. I went to Ireland to do a good deed. For Marty. Not my usual shtick. No kidding. Huh. Anyway, no good deed goes unpunished. I went there to bring Marty back to Landview to visit some dying little girl in a hospital. What did I get for it but a bullet in my back? Wait, wait. How did this happen? I borrowed Thornhart's coat. I took a walk in the fog. The next thing I know, I'm dead. And what did Patrick do? What any fourth-rate poet in his position would do. He stole my passport, he came to Landview, he seduced my widow, and for good measure, he got her pregnant. So that's not exactly the basis of a lasting friendship, is it? All I know is that Thornhart hates me as much as I despise him. What's his beef with you? Ask the poet boy. I've got to tell you, this is going to make a pretty hard sell back in the banner. Oh, you're telling me they worship at the Thornhart altar. Okay. I think I understand why you hate Patrick. Now, let's try this again. What's he got against you? People hate what they fear. And right now, Thornhart fears me. I am home. Beat the bird. Nice to see you, too. So what do you think, Bert? Just one big happy family. Mama's in pieces. Baby's on ice. And I can't do anything about it except wait and wait. Never more. You got that right. You know, I, I tried to play it Vicky's way for a while. You know, just for Star's sake. You know, model citizen, family type. Look what that got me. Lamp sauce. Just about. This is no act of God either, you know? I mean, I'm... I really thought that big guy was going to give me a break for once. I mean, I know that Star was sick and, you know, he made sure that my wife was knocked up, but, but the baby that was in Blair's belly was going to be a perfect match for Star. And I, I know that he works in mysterious ways and it doesn't get much wackier than this. Never more. Yeah, that's right, never more. Patrick saw to that, planned his little accident, killed his kid to make nice with Marty. I mean, he doesn't care if Blair gets her legs busted and Star loses the perfect match. Not gonna hurt him, right? That's where he's wrong. It's gonna hurt him plenty. Just need some information. Can't ask Marty. I think the one person who knows what I need to know and who hates Thornhart as much as I do is Keneally, the leader of the men of 21. Keneally chased Patrick halfway around the world. Gotta know something about Patrick that would make him squirm. On the lamp? No, not anymore. Patrick made sure he was in some kind of an Irish prison. Hello. Stop the phone, it's a fax. an Irish. Well, things are looking up. Yeah, my sources in Dublin have located Keneally's high security retirement home. 
Looks like I'm gonna need a bird sitter and a round trip ticket to uh, Dunleary Jail. Yeah. Keneally probably doesn't get to talk to many people. Maybe he'll be in a conversational mood. If he tells me what I want to know, maybe he'll have company before he knows. Easy now, I need all that stuff. It's your own. It's your own. You said you wanted to meet Bert. There he is. You weren't kidding. That's a parrot. I, uh, need to ask you a little favor. This is Jessica. Oh. And this is my sister, Vicky. Oh. Oh, I like him. <laughs> well, now that you guys have bonded, maybe you wouldn't mind watching him for a few days? <gasps> no, not at all. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Why do you need a bird sitter? Well, I'm going out of town on business. Business? Yeah. That paper that I published, you remember? Your competition? This is as good a time as any. She stars in isolation, so I can't see her anyway. I mean, she's slowly improving, but I could talk to the doctor by phone every hour or so. And so all that's left to take care of is this, uh, this guy. Now, look, he's clean. He, he's easy to feed. All he needs is a little companionship. Now, don't worry. He's no trouble. Most of the time, you won't even notice he's there. And the rest of the time? Ah. <laughs> Does he have <laughs> another name besides Bird? Well, no. I've been calling him Admiral, but he has been ignoring me. <laughs> The jury's still out on Larry. I guess he's a Laker fan. Todd, how long are you going to be away? I'll be back before you know it. Oh, yeah. Come on, Mom. Look how gorgeous it is. Todd is right. They do need company. No. Todd knows how to build a good case. Oh, all right. Good. I'll have his perch and his bird seed and his bird toy sent over in the morning. Just don't give him any clam sauce. Now, don't ask, but trust me on this one. I'm sure they're going to treat you just like one of the family. You'll be spoiled rotten in no time at all. A short-term lease? That's not what we originally discussed on the phone. Well, my plans have changed. I'm not sure how long I'll be in Landview. In that case... Well, I... we can transfer it to my roommate if I had to leave. I should let you know, somebody else is very interested in this apartment. He wanted his fiancé to see it first, but if he's ready to sign... Speak of the devil. Hello, Mr. Buchanan. Hi, the uh, office said you were showing the apartment to somebody else. Sorry, I didn't realize uh, that. Did you bring your fiance? No, I thought I'd come by and check it out um, myself again. Nice place, huh? Yeah. The uh, Whirlpool tub is big enough for two. Of course, I don't have a fiance, but I'm sure I could make good use of it. And the, uh, the indirect lighting on dimmers, very romantic. I would have said elegant, but that would suit you fine also. Yeah. Even the bathroom faucets have more class than some people I know. You two are acquainted. Good. Um, maybe you two can discuss this and, and work it out between yourselves. I need to speak to the building manager downstairs. I'll give you time to discuss this. So, Cassie's your fiance. I was just saying that for the broker's sake. The real estate agency is on the conservative side. Oh. I meant to call you. Why? Well, things, everything just happened so fast. I feel like. I owed you an apology. For what? For hurting your feelings. Oh, I'm sorry, was that lame too? Look, I'm just... You want the apartment? You can have it. I can find better. You're angry. Wait, at the risk of sounding dead. So why? You know what your problem is? You're a throwback, Kevin. It's the old Madonna whore thing. While you worked up a sweat between the sheets with me, you worshipped Cassie on her pedestal. You know, I, I wonder what's going to happen now. Because you can't be a Madonna after you leave your husband and child for your lover. Here's a prediction. 
You'll wind up with as little respect for her as you had for me. I do respect you. Oh, give me a break. That's right up there with the check is in the mail. All right, cut it out, all right? Just stop and you listen. You want it right between the eyes? You are no gentleman. Gentleman. This coming from the modern woman? Watch it. You might want me to open the door for you or lay my coat over a mud puddle. We're back to respect. But in your mind, respect doesn't seem to go with the, the healthy enjoyment of uncomplicated sex. Maybe you need a little bit of uh, dishonesty and guilt to make it work for you, huh? Hold it. As I remembered, you were the one who opted for a mutual physical gratification without the strings attached. And as I remembered, you felt the need to put me in my place when I had the temerity to suggest that maybe you should stick around, Lambview, because I thought we had something nice going on here. Well, obviously, I was wrong. I was supposed to read between the lines. You expected more. And I'm sorry. Don't give yourself so much credit. It's a pity, that's all. We could have had a lot more fun. <laughs> but Cassie is so intense. Not exactly the fun type. It's huh? not about fun with Cassie. I'm sure. Poor Kevin. What I meant to say was that we are both committed. Yeah, but committed to what? You're stuck with a woman you conveniently thought was unattainable. And Cassie? Well, maybe I'm wrong, but I'd say she's committed to ditching her boring husband. So what happens after you've served that purpose for her, huh? You want to blame it all on me? Fine, okay? But leave Cassie out of this because you really don't know her well enough to be judging her. And you are definitely not an expert on commitment. Touché. I'm sorry if you feel that I have been in any way dishonest with you. You know, the only thing as far as I'm concerned that has changed between us is that I'm just no longer able to act on my impulses. Because Cassie acted on hers. She did not act on impulse. This thing has been building for quite a long time. Oh, yes. She pounded and pounded on those prison walls until you came to save her. She must be very grateful. But are you willing to sell for gratitude? It's not about gratitude. Oh, well, then what is it about? You really want to hear it? Yes. She loves me. I love her. <sighs> I see. So it wasn't about her trying to get out of a marriage that wasn't working. It was her trying to get into a love relationship with you. No, that wasn't it. She fought it for a long time, but it was just inevitable. Oh, gee, I read about that in the, uh, in the checkout line at the supermarket. Inevitable love. Oh, there was another article. Ten ways to keep from going crazy when she dumps That's you. That's funny. You always this cynical? Yes, I really am. Let me ask you something. Has Cassie told you in so many words that she loves you? Did you work it all out? You will move. I think I'm going to be a gentleman and let you take the apartment. Because on second look, it just all leaves me cold. Did you hear that Cassie Carpenter left her husband? No. Ay, que lastima. Oh, yeah. She shacked up with Kevin Buchanan. Kevin? Uh-huh. Oh, my God, poor Evan Carpenter. When did this happen? The day before Mr. Soto went loco. You mean when Kevin and Reverend Carpenter were in here negotiating with Ernesto? That makes you wonder if it didn't occur to Reverend Carpenter to negotiate his wife's lover into the line of fire. You would never have guessed there was anything wrong between them. Did you know that Kevin was interested in Cassie that way? Oh, yeah. 
But I couldn't imagine he'd choose her when he could have me. Is it your pride that's hurt or your heart? Both. And that's not the way it's supposed to be. I saw him this morning. Mm-hmm. I thought I had it under control. But I saw red. I mean, I literally saw red. It was like... like blood behind the eyes. I had to... I had to concentrate to breathe. And all this because of a man who treated me like a rented car. Love. It can be like that. Look, I don't fall in love, okay? Ouch. That's one of my cardinal rules. So you broke your own rule? Next time, I take what I want. And I don't give anything back. That way, I don't get hurt. That's no way to live, me, huh? When you put up a wall, you block out as much as you're blocking in. So I have a little door I can open when I choose. But if I start to get interested in a man, I will slam it shut. He hurt you that much, huh? Let oh, me have some more of your excellent habichuelas. Oh, yeah? Oh, I'm fine. Are you, uh, still interested in finding a place? Yeah, I am. <laughs> well, it just so happens I'm looking for a roommate. Oh, well, that sounds great. Are you sure you want me as a roommate and not, uh, Kevin Buchanan? Kevin who? How much money the people from around here have saved? Oh, so all of you are going to plan on taking your money out of Mr. Buchanan's bank? Oh, you bet. Ben, how much money do you have in this bank? Actually, when I transferred my funds from New York, I put them in the bank downtown. Of course, where the Buchanans put their own money. Rachel and Taya found an apartment. Around here? Uh, the west side. Where the Buchanan's live. Not exactly. Close enough so she doesn't have to mix with her own people. Listen, I hope you're not a gourmet cook or anything, because the one thing this place doesn't have is a big kitchen. There's one thing my mother taught me. It was to stay out of the kitchen. You know, it's not only Mr. Soto's store they want to grab. Or don't you care what's happening around here? We can use a lawyer. I'm sorry. I'm not available. Why? Because you won't defend your own kind? Oh, don't you? I help defend you. Or doesn't that count? I'm not with a big law firm. I can't take on more than one case, okay? So you're saying no. I have to give Alex Olinoff my full attention. Well, I've got news for you. And Asa Buchanan. Turn your back on this community, and we will turn our backs on you. Okay, here we go. Oh. Hi. Hey, how's Star? She's still very, very weak, but they've assured me that her blood counts are stable, so there's no sign that she's rejecting the transplanted bone marrow. Which figures, right? Because Alex's match was very good. Well, yes, honey, but rejection is always a risk. You can never be sure. Right, sounds familiar. <laughs> can never be sure of anything. That's life, kiddo. Thanks. So did they at least let you in the room? No, 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 no. It's the usual thing. I had to wave to her through the glass. Did Todd call? Nope. Well, you know what? I know we talked to Dr. Sands. I've got to go and do some work. I'm going to be in the solarium, and I'd like you to answer the phone for me, okay? But if Todd calls... I'll come and get you. Thank you. Sure. <gasps> Mom! What's the matter? He's dead. Oh, no, the poor dear. That rotten bird. Mom! Well, now I don't know what to do. I mean, I probably should call Todd, but... I mean, he said not to call him on his cell phone unless it was an emergency. Does this qualify? I mean, it's the middle of the afternoon. How can 
nobody be in their office. Mom, what is the vet going to say anyway? The bird is dead. We know that. <coughs> don't look at me. Well, don't look at me. <coughs> you big faker. <laughs> Oh, you can count on Todd's bird to have a warped sense of humor. You scare us half to death. <laughs> oh, 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 please. Don't try and make it up to us. I got your number now, pal. And we are far less easy to manipulate than that. <laughs> we are far less easy to manipulate. <laughs> oh, never mind. Mom, look how cute he is. He's asking us for his forgiveness, right? Right. He's asking for a smart rap in the beak. Oh, Mom! Oh, he's such a sweetheart. Maybe you can take me to the prom, huh? Oh, oh, I... oh, 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 ruined everything with Chris by being a virginal retard. Well, I guess I'll feed you now since you're alive. Oh. <clears throat> Pardon? Oh. Oh. I trust you will inform me of any more avian emergencies that might arise. Okay, I'll feed him a little bit. Okay. Oh. Look, it's a simple yes or no question. Did Thornhart blow up Whiting on his boat? It is not a simple question at all. Well, could you lay it out for me? And hurry, I'm freezing. Thornhart discovered that uh, Whiting was to cruise the Shannon. He scouted the yacht, found no security to speak of, and he found a place in the hold for Liam Buckley to stow his package. Which Sir Thornhart didn't plant the bomb himself. No, he drove Liam to the docks, and where Liam was to place the bomb. He would finally exact his revenge, but it cost him the life of a good friend. The lads weren't as proficient as they liked to believe when it came to building bombs. As Liam was stashing it aboard, it blew. Two crew members were knocked overboard and injured. Liam was killed instantly, but he took his target with him. Whiting was asleep in his stateroom. Doesn't sound complicated to me at all. It's exactly what I thought. Thornhart is a murderer. Thornhart is as guilty as his blown to bits pal Buckley. It's premeditated. He was an accomplice. I think you should get the rap for it. Thornhart only got involved because of his hatred for what Whiting did to his sister. And the cell leaders felt he had acquitted himself satisfactorily. Um, if you'll excuse the expression. After all, Whiting was dead, which was the main objective. Thornhart hadn't assembled the bomb, which was, you know, it was a simple affair, plastique and, uh, and a kitchen timer. But that explosion called a loss of unwelcome attention attention to themselves so they put him under a deep cover and uh, deactivated him sent patrick off to trinity in dublin where he burrowed into the bookshelves Our poetry and literature were always his main interest and then he ended up teaching at the college so that was the end of it no they tried to reactivate him uh, a few years ago but he had none of it which was a pity the boy had a natural inclination for it. What, being a terrorist? Uh, well, he was a born leader. Uh, he could have taught them a lot. You sound almost sorry about it. Professional respect <laughs> of a sort. He was on the other side. Oh, everybody is on my other side. Well, he's some kind of an anarchist. <laughs> exactly. What are you going to do with this story? Take it back to America and publish it? No, no. They'll put you and me right in the middle. Besides, it's too dicey. 
I mean, this case is, uh, is an old one, and the prosecution rests on, on you as a witness, and any defense lawyer could discredit you, no problem. Mm -hmm. Quite possibly. You know, if I could, you know, construct something new and have it point to the professor, then I could use all of this to kind of back it up. Hmm, yes, but uh, what do you propose to do? Oh, I do have a few thoughts on the subject. But I'm going to need some more help from you. Yeah, it's pretty good, huh? I could handle that, but it'll cost you another 500,000. Yeah, well, that's only money. I'll give you the same proof tomorrow. Good enough. It'll have to be. And then I can go back to Landview and blow Thornheart right out of the water. I want my bird back. I may never forgive you for this. Hi, I'll go get it. Your bird is in serious need of professional help. Guess it runs in the family. Yeah. He loves to play dead. Which, of course, we only found out after we thought it was the real thing. Oh, well, he does that to get attention. Looks like it worked. You might have warned us. I guess it slipped my mind. But he, he, he's angry when he gets ignored, you see. And, and he's in touch with his emotions. I mean, he doesn't want to keep all of that anger bottled up. Because where have I heard that before? I do not need to be on this end of my own advice. Look, you just have to accept the bird for who the bird is and then move on, Vicky. Yeah, you're asking for it. Yeah, I am. Come on. You really are. Let's go. <laughs> Here he is. Hey. hey. <laughs> One step ahead of the taxidermist, huh? Guess you weren't too much trouble. I mean, outside of the practical jokes. No, he was a perfect gentleman. <laughs> well, I guess he likes you. <laughs> is that good or bad? No, I haven't figured that out yet. Right from the airport, right? I, I go straight to the hospital, put on my Mars suit, and I held Star until she fell asleep. She seems a lot better. She is, Ty. It's a miracle. Yeah. And I call Blair, too. Go visit her in her hospital tomorrow, I think. She seems better, too. So, how did your trip go? You went. Meaning? Meaning I'm not going to discuss my whatever you want to call it with the competition. You're going to have to get a subscription just like everybody else. This jet lag is killing me. And after the hospital, I had a bottle of cheap wine. Can you get the bird's stuff and I'll get him back to the bachelor pad? My pleasure. It will be my delight to go and get the parrot finalia. I'm sorry I had to leave you with the relatives for a few days. But as days go, mine were really productive. Must have been hard for you to be here, huh? This place just isn't for guys like us. It's like a lifetime sentence at a dinner party. Things were great in Ireland, just great. Oh. Had to spend a little bit of seed money, though. <laughs> Had to dip into my nest egg. <laughs> but it was worth every Irish pound. Keneally told me everything I need to know about that peacock Patrick. Enough to turn him into a clay pigeon. <laughs> 